Picture this, you're tired of hosting webinars with just your webcam. So you invest a lot in creating a highly professional studio. Full of excitement, you start your first webinar until you find out that there's something wrong. Yeah, we back live? All right. So how can you use that equipment for your webinars and prevent whatever that was from happening? Let us explain. Let's start from the beginning. What is RTMP? RTMP is an acronym for Real-Time Message Protocol. Still confused? I don't blame you. It's a difficult subject if we dive into it. But luckily for your webinars, I have an explanation that is pretty simple. A protocol, in this case a communication protocol, is a system so that two or more entities can transfer information to each other. In other words, communicate with each other. And the information that is being transferred via RTMP is streaming audio, video and other data. With anything in streaming, you try to get as much quality as possible from the available resources. Both RTMP and streaming from the browser work like this. Like a funnel. Well, as you already noticed, this is a sports cone, but you get the idea. As with any funnel, there's a certain amount of data that can be processed and then forwarded to one of our servers. With the browser, or with WebRTC, that funnel is a lot smaller because there are just simply less available resources for streaming. With RTMP, however, that funnel is a lot larger, which means that more data can be sent, thus resulting in a higher quality. And it isn't just more data that can be sent. RTMP allows users to combine different media types into one source. This means that you can mix video, audio and text together. Many variations of different media channels are possible as well. For example, you can stream both AAC and MP3 audio streams using RTMP. Yes, and what's a better way to show it by using yes, 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 oh yes. As you can see, I've already added my Logitech C922 Pro Stream webcam as a video capture device in OBS. You can add a video capture device or any other source by clicking on the plus icon bottom left of your source dock and choose one of these sources. This is just a very quick overview uh, in OBS. If you want to know more, please check out a video dedicated to OBS on our YouTube channel. For now, we just have a very quick overview because that is all that I want to show you because this is a video about RTMP. If you go to the left of your source doc, you will find your scene doc. And scenes are really great if you have uh, different segments in your webinar on which you need different backgrounds or you have different cameras or you have something else or you might want to show a video in OBS instead of using our great video injection tool. So you can use scenes for that. One to the right of the source doc, you will find your audio mixer. And as you can see, we can add a Logitech C922 Pro Stream Webcam as an audio input capture, uh, but for now I've just, as an audio input capture, just added my integrated microphone from my laptop. One to the right from the audio mixer, you will have the controls so you can start your stream, start a recording, which is just the recording of your OBS canvas. You can start a virtual camera, you can set it to studio mode, settings and an exit button. But didn't I mention something about hosting professional webinars without a webcam? I believe I did. So let me just change one thing really quick. Time lapse. Yes. As you can see, I've changed one, well, actually a couple of things to my OBS. And the first thing you will notice is that the video capture device is no longer called Logitech C922 Pro Stream Webcam, but it has changed to Atem Mini Pro. And that's because, like I said in the beginning, if you are tired of hosting webinars with a webcam, and mind you, streaming from the browser with a webcam and a good audio input capture device works great as well. But if you really want that, super crisp quality and you really want to stream like it's a TV show, you will need an external encoder like OBS, you will need RTMP, and if you ask me, you will also need a great video switcher in order for your professional cameras to go to OBS and then stream to Webinar Geek. What's an Atom Mini Pro, you might ask? This is an Atom Mini Pro, the thing you see in my OBS right here. The Atom Mini Pro has four HDMI inputs so you can connect four highly professional cameras. You also have the option to add microphones and you also have the option to go full on with picture in picture. 
On our YouTube channel, there's also a video dedicated to the Atom Mini Pro, so be sure to watch that as well. Now we have added our Atom Mini Pro and we have set up OBS, it is now time for the final part and that is of course setting up our RTMP webinar. Yes, so now it's time to set up RTMP for our webinar, of course, in Webinar Geek. If you have an enterprise account with Webinar Geek, you already have RTMP in your account. If you have a premium plan, you will need to add RTMP as an add-on. If you want that add-on, please contact our wonderful support team and they will help you further. For now, in my account, of course, I have RTMP, so let's turn it on in this webinar. So this is my webinar. Go to Edit Webinar. I've already created and published it. So then we go to webinar and here you will find a switch. Of course, use external encoder, RTMP, real-time message protocol, publish live streams from an external encoder, in our case, OBS, with RTMP or use your browser to stream, which we have RTMP, so why should we stream from the browser? If you press this toggle, it will say use external encoder, which we have OBS. So that is turned on, let's open our live webinar. And then you will see four different codes, a host name, a stream key, a username, and a password. These four things are different with every webinar and that's because of our security and the security in general, which is also a big part of RTMP is that it is much more secure than streaming from the browser. And actually, if you stream from the browser, your IP address can leak much faster than if you use RTMP. So if we now, go to OBS and we go to the controls and we press settings. Then go to stream and here you will see server and stream key, which are the first two. Then in OBS, you need to press use authentication and there we can add the username and the password. And all we need to do right now is just copy these codes and put them in the right place in our OBS settings. Then press apply and then press OK. And there we have it. Now we have added the codes from the webinar to our external encoder, which is OBS. In the controls as well in OBS, you will also see a start streaming button. And then if you press it, it is green, so it's being sent out. And then the stream is up in Webinar Geek as well. And there we go. But you might have noticed something already. And that's because since I'm talking to you right now, uh, it is not very correspondence with the webinar you see on my screen right now. And that's because RTMP has a small delay of around 15 seconds. And that's because since you can send more via RTMP, it will also need a little bit more time. It's like waiting for your package because something was wrong with the package and they want your package to be perfectly delivered as possible. So that's why there's a small delay with your package delivery. Same holds true with RTMP. With RTMP, and I haven't mentioned this in the explanation, but I will explain it right here. RTMP is a system that works uh, with a lot of different uh, communication. So it communicates to that. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, and then we can stream. And because it does that communication with behind the scenes computers, which you can see, it takes some time. So the viewers will have a 15 second uh, delay. Like if I talk right now, the viewers will see it 50 seconds later. But that's because uh, to ensure with the highest quality possible if you are streaming with RTMP. Also a great thing about RTMP is if we go to the OBS settings once more. And then we go to output. On the top right here you see streaming. And then video bitrate 4000. 4000 is a bit rate that we recommend and that is also possible with RTMP because we are using this external encoder. And this holds, and this holds through with the uh, difference in quality, like I mentioned, uh, and with the funnel as well. It's because the RTMP funnel is larger than the one uh, used by streaming with the browser. You can crank up this video bit rate to 4000 and it will stream just as well as let's say a uh, uh, stream from the browser which has 2000 bit rate, just to say something. So I already added this 4000 video bitrate 
And bitrate, uh, mind you, bitrate is the rate of data, so that's basically the quality. So with RTMP, the quality you can crank up, but not too much, because if you crank it up way, way above, it costs a lot more from your CPU. So 4000 is a bitrate that we recommend. And then press OK. And right now, we have set up our RTMP, uh, RTMP with, of course, our ATA Mini Pro. And if you look at my screen right now, I will show it in the video. You will see that I'm talking a, lit a little bit different uh, right now, as you see in the video. Like I said, there's a delay for those lip readers amongst us. But that's how you can set up your RTMP webinar using OBS, Webinar Geek, and the ATEM Mini Pro. So now you know what RTMP is, let me show you how you can use it for your webinars.